The harpsichord is a plucked keyboard instrument with origins in 14th century Europe. Its silvery tone is a signature sound of the Baroque period. Harpsichord use began declining at the end of the 18th century, when the current musical style favored dynamic expression. Over the past century, the harpsichord has recovered from its near extinction. Its role in Western music history is not forgotten. However, the harpsichord is not just an instrument of the past. Its relevance in the 21st century may well depend on its ability to provide a rich versatility in a contemporary context. I run a nonprofit called Alinor, and we run a competition for new music for the harpsichord, and we've generated over 500 scores in the past 35 years. In order to have a face for Alinor and for contemporary music, it wasn't appropriate to have someone else's instrument. So it's been a number of years that I've been very excited about the possibility of having a new instrument. Elaine. Back about 2002, 2003, started talking about wanting to do something contemporary with a harpsichord. When this came up again, I said to Elaine, you and I started talking about this years ago. I said, I made those models, and now we were going to do all this. And I said, you know, we never did anything. And I said, you know, I said, the clock's ticking. I said, I think maybe it's time to consider doing it. For me, it was a seize a moment kind of thing. It was, okay, Elaine obviously believes that I can do this, whether I believe it or not is not really the issue, that it is a challenge. I don't know how it's going to go, but let's step into the void and see what happens. There were a lot of growing pains in the birth of this harpsichord. We were discussing the stand, which became the cradle. We were discussing the colors. We were discussing, at one point, Richard came to me and said, I want to use glass as hand stops. Now, that is so out there. Never has a harpsichord used glass. All I can say is, yeah, I thought and thought and thought about it. Richard gave me various renderings that sort of showed what the dimensions were, but still it did not prepare me for when a nine-foot-something lid came into my studio, and um, there it was. And that was probably the most unsettling, scariest moment of all, when I realized that a lot of hope was hinging on what I did next. <laughs> so... so what did you do next? I painted it orange. <laughs> I just, it, it was already primed. I literally just took out my latest favorite color, which is Australian Sienna, and covered it. Lisa was the muse uh, for this project. Uh, it pushed me to design those hinges. It pushed me to design that stand. And so I really reached to some new places. Cause I, and I had, to, I had to come up with a way that her work was going to have freedom she was going to have freedom to work on this instrument and not be confined to anything traditional. My initial idea was that it would sort of be like heralding, like the trumpets that herald the sound. And I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked on that and tried really, really hard to make it gel, did all kinds of things, painted things on, painted things out, and finally realized that it had to go. So the night before the lid rejoined the actual harpsichord case, I painted out about four-fifths of the hole. And in the end, it was absolutely the right thing to do, but it was also one of those phone calls that you dread to make to uh, the person who's commissioned you to do something and say, um, Elaine, <clears throat> everything that you have seen to date 
most of it is gone. <clears throat> and I remember her on the other end of the phone going, ah, okay. And I said, you know, it's going to be okay. I want to rough some stuff in. I have some ideas. And so when we combine the lid with the actual harpsichord case tomorrow, all will be well. <laughs> I promised. <laughs> and I hung up the phone and just went, oh God, what have I done? I wasn't really worried about it because my first harpsichord, I had to, I painted it myself and we never got the legs painted and I performed on it with sawhorses. So I really wasn't worried that I knew the instrument was finished and the painting would eventually get done. But I think Lisa was very aware of the deadline and, and got it done on time. I realized when we were finishing this thing up, uh, because there was that little period there where to me it could have been disaster or it could have been absolute success. This thing could go either way. <laughs> it could go down I could go down in flames with this one. It it, it came. The left up to the green uh, frond that's meant to be plant-like, organic, you know, alive. You'll see black and white checks coming from the top and from in, coming from the bottom, which is a representation of the composer and the musician coming together. They then come and move to the green frond, and from that point on, the music takes over. So the composer and the musician and the instrument become, in a sense, one. What's so exciting about this harpsichord is that it's so visual. And what I'm trying to do is have more people see it and be drawn in just visually and then be drawn into the sound of it. It will be the most renowned harpsichord of its time. It will be the most recognized harpsichord of its time because of how it's being used, who's using it, and what it is. It's that different. <laughs>